What's going on everybody? Jeff Holiday here and today I'm making a very very quick simple simple video because it is very relevant and very important. What I really need to be working on is my video on ivermectin, my part two of catching up with the coronavirus. Unfortunately, I broke the tip of my middle finger. You can't really see it on the camera too well, uh, but this is incredibly painful, especially when you have to type or play video games. I'm very frustrated, but I am still working on it because to be honest, I'm just super pissed and I'm working through the pain. But right now, there is something very relevant that I wanted to make a quick video about that wouldn't require too much editing because I think more people need to pay attention to it. You see, we have a little bit of a problem right now with not just news outlets uh, pushing a bunch of pseudoscience nonsense, but also some politicians. I am referring to, unfortunately, to Mr. Rand Paul. Rand Paul calls YouTube's suspension over coronavirus mass skepticism a badge of honor. Senator Rand Paul is calling suspension imposed on him by YouTube a badge of honor after it removed a video in which he claimed most masks don't prevent the spread of the coronavirus, which is not true. Uh, Paul said, and we'll get there, don't worry. Paul said he's been suspended for seven days from uploading any videos to his upload, his official YouTube account. After saying in a three-minute video posted last week that most of the masks you get over the counter don't work, they don't prevent infection, which is a very weaselly statement. And yet again, we will get to that in just a moment. He also said in the video, now removed from the platform, trying to shape human behavior isn't the same as following the actual science, which tells us that cloth masks don't work. That is actually a lie. A YouTube spokesperson said Wednesday in a statement to the Washington Post, we removed content from Senator Paul's channel for including claims that masks are ineffective in preventing the contraction or transmission of COVID-19 in accordance with our COVID-19 medical misinformation policies. So he broke the rules, and he got punished. He's mad because of the consequences of his actions, not because he's being censored, which, yes, technically is being censored, but it's YouTube's platform. And as much as sometimes I don't necessarily agree with the censorship they do, it's their right to do it. People want to phrase this as a free speech, First Amendment issue, and whenever anybody brings up, like, getting censored or banned from YouTube as a First Amendment violation, you know that they don't know what the First Amendment actually is, and they've never read the actual Constitution. You can just kind of like, okay, over the, just go, go drink a juice box, okay? All right. Okay. Paul had also accused YouTube of censoring him and acting like an arm of the government in the video. YouTube said in the statement that the company applied its policies consistently across the platform, regardless of speaker or political views. That's not necessarily always true now, is it? But I digress. In another example of tech companies taking a tougher line, Twitter suspended Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene on Monday after she falsely tweeted that vaccines were failing. That also is a lie. Her seven-day suspension is the latest rebuke from the social media platform over a post about coronavirus misinformation, something that violates the social media company's policies. Simple as that. These are basically people getting super, super ass mad because they're telling people lies. And not just lies, but lies that can get people killed. And they're claiming that the science is on their side. Well, unfortunately, well, fortunately for us, science does not care about political persuasion. Science is not swayed by who you voted for or which political party you are aligned with, science is just, it's just science. It's just science. It's as simple as that. Green has also claimed that coronavirus vaccines do not work because some people have still contracted the virus despite being vaccinated, a clear indicator that she doesn't understand how vaccines work, and said that the FDA should not fully authorize them. The vaccines have been approved for emergency use by the FDA and have been taken by more than half of the U.S. population. Most of the cases are among the unvaccinated groups. We just went over that in my last video. It's the, the numbers are so incredibly clear. So incredibly clear. Even if you're vaccinated, yes, you can still contract COVID. Your symptoms will be greatly lessened. Your ability to transmit it to other people is greatly lessened. The vaccines overwhelmingly work. Overwhelmingly. And even in the cases where they haven't necessarily given you perfect protection, they could potentially be saving your life because your symptoms are not going to be as bad. That's just all there is to it. The, the data has been showing this. The people that are going against this and challenging this are people who are prescribing 
to pseudoscience and are going against consensual understood and the wide, wide array of data. It's denialism. That's all it is. But I don't want you to just take my word for it. I don't. The topic for today is not overall vaccine safety, nor is it anything other than just masks. Because for some reason, this guy has a problem with masks. I don't know. Maybe he just feel, finds that they're uncomfortable or, or they're, they're hiding his charming boyish smile. I don't know. But let's take a look at some of the actual evidence. For instance, we have over here this paper, Effectiveness of Mask Wearing to Control com Community Spread of SARS-CoV-2. Researchers, including a CDC doctor, for a February 20, 2021 article published by the Journal of the American Medical Association, reviewed data from 10 previous studies, conclude mask wearing substantially reduces spread. They write that wearing a cloth mask can reduce transmission of exhaled droplets from infected wearers into the air by around 50 to 70 percent. Additionally, masks are shown to help prevent uninfected wearers from inhaling large respiratory droplets. Overall, the authors found mask wearing ba main benefit is source control, which protects others by reducing the number of respiratory droplets released, rather than respiratory protection, which protects the wearer. This is one of the most important parts, and we really have to understand this. Wearing a mask is not necessarily about you protecting yourself. It just isn't. Because the, the nature of us trying to make sure that everybody who's wearing a mask has a perfect seal is implausible. People who have to work in, in dangerous environments or in infectious labs can't have facial hair for one thing. So are we going to convince the whole goddamn world, every man with a beard, to stay clean shaven the whole time so that they can wear a medical grade mask and have a perfect seal? No, that's not going to happen. Masks can help a little bit with keeping you protected. What it actually is, is that a simple cloth covering reduces your ability to breathe out a huge fucking cloud of plague if you happen to have any of the virus in your system. Whether you're vaccinated or not, because it could still be in your body. You're just able to fight it off better. It can still be in there. That's why everybody should wear a mask when we have a mask mandate. It's to stop you infecting others. And then if we're all doing it, then we can't infect new people. And the virus goes away. But that's just one study. Okay, fine. Just one study? Let's look at another one. An Evidence Review of Face Masks Against COVID-19. Published in January by Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the U.S. researchers, poured over at least 150 other studies, models, and findings to draw their conclusion. The non-medical masks went out in public, or, <clears throat> excuse me, the available evidence suggests that near-universal adoption of non-medical masks made when out in public, in combination with complementary public health measures, could successfully reduce virus reproduction levels to below 1% thereby reducing community spread if such measures are sustained. Additionally, they posit that mask wearing mandates could add $1 trillion to the U.S. GDP by preventing business closures. Is that, is that not enough? Okay, how about this one? A June 2020 study in medical journal The Lancet reviewed 172 other studies from 16 countries and found that while different masks offer different effectiveness... Mass overall result in a large reduction in risk of infection. Not enough? Okay, how about another one? Let's try this one. Uh, we got November 2020 article published in the Environmental Pollution Journal concluded mask wearing is effective at preventing contact droplet and possibly airborne transmission of COVID-19. An October 2020 study in Extreme Mechanics Letters found that cloth face coverings, particularly masks with multiple layers, have over 70% blocking efficiency, while multiple layered fabric was found to stop droplets with more than 94% efficiency, which is equitable to that of medical mass. One more. And by the way, I've got almost 50 of these, and it'll all be posted down in, in, the, in the description down below. A high-speed laser light video experiment in the New England Journal of Medicine caused oral fluid droplets to appear as flashes in the light. When observed, between 227 and 347 oral fluid droplets flashed when participants said the words, stay healthy, without a mask. When the same phrase is spoken with a mask, the flash remained close to background level. That's visual evidence. Not, not just 
a study and scientists saying things, which we should probably listen to anyway, because every single one of these is peer-reviewed. It's an actual video demonstration that masks prevent transmission. Now I'm recording. Stay healthy. Great. Stay healthy. Are you recording? Yeah. Stay healthy. Louder. Stay healthy. Louder. Stay healthy. They work. Masks work. That's all there is to it. It is not any more complicated than this. Now, the thing that's the most upsetting about this is this brain-dead fucking idea that somehow we have to coddle a bunch of jackass fucking politicians because they go on and they spout a bunch of dog shit pseudoscience. These people are rich. They have staff. They have plenty of people that can go and fact check anything that they need to say. But it comes down to just basic citizenry trying to correct them on this stuff. I work out of my goddamn garage and I got a broken finger and I got to go through and be reading all these studies when an elected goddamn official can't even just set like an intern to maybe go fact check on masks. So it leaves us one of two possible scenarios in this. The people that are pushing this anti-science dog shit are either terribly stupid or they're politicizing something that doesn't need to be political. And the consequence of that is potentially prolonging the pandemic, more damage to our fucking country, and death. It's, 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 it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, my finger hurts. I am going to <laughs> go put it on ice and then get back to trying to edit this ivermectin video. Um, I really appreciate your time and your consideration watching this video. If you want to, you can uh, subscribe to Patreon, shit like that. Whatever. I hate shilling myself. Anyway, from my family... Ow! Fuck! From my family to yours, I hope you are well. I hope they are well. Take care of yourselves and each other. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye! -bye, everybody.